Hi everyone. So today I'll be con I'll continue to discuss problems from the sample IMO NST paper, and today we'll also be discussing th three questions, namely problem four, five, and six at the other page. So so let's jump right into it, and maybe you can see over here. So question number four first. A among two hundred fifty students at school, one hundred fifty have taken part in the mathematics Olympiad, and then I won't be continuing the sentence. You can read it yourself. So uh, here I would like to introduce a new concept. I don't know if this will be taught to you or you have learned it before. But here is a thing called a Venn diagram. Venn diagram. If you haven't learned it, I encourage you to look for educational videos on YouTube. If you have, so congratulations, you will be using this form this concept so uh what this means is okay you, you might be confused or uh, looking at circles and rectangles what do they mean so uh this rectangle it means all the elements what elements <laughs> all the stuff that, that's contained in here so we write a zeta uh, meaning the greek letter z and then uh this these circles these circles uh rep namely they represent one category so circles Circles is for categories. Category. So in this case, we will only have two categories, namely the Math Olympiad and the Science Olympiad. So I will denote these two by M and S. So you can see that there is a part in which the two circles intersect. So what is this? This is actually the students which have participated in both Math and Science Olympiads, but then what about the area outside the circle but still within the rectangle? So uh, this area will be students that do not participate in either of the math or science olympiads. But uh, the problem says that each student participates in at least one olympiad. So this rectangular space is basically non-existent. Okay. So, uh, let me break it into parts. So, for math, for math, we have 150. For science, we have 130. So, if you add 150 and 130, it, you can obviously see that it has uh, exceeded. How, why do I say so? Because 150 plus 130 is 280, which has exceeded 250. So, uh, it, it is this area, is this overlapping area which has to get counted. You can see it's get it got counted twice because there are two circles circling it. So uh let us use some basic algebra. So denote the area overlapped as x. So uh 150 minus x, which is the circle on the left with meaning mathematics olympiad, but I, we do not include the this part plus uh, 130 minus x circle on the right science olympiad and we still do not include this overlapping part plus x because we will be including this back is 250 so these are all the students so using some basic algebra we will get that uh, 280 minus x equals to 250 so after some uh, calculations we get that x is equal to 30 so this is our answer for number four and problem five a point p is inside square bcd such a triangle abp is equilateral find angle pcd in degrees so uh i know most of malaysian students are scared by geometry and because i once was also so a b c d this is a square so what this what properties does a square have so all four sides are equal and then they are all equal to 90 degrees. I hope you guys have learned that by now. And such that triangle ABP is equilateral, which means that uh, P is somewhere here. But PB is also equal to PA is also equal to AB equal to the other three sides. So find PCD in degrees. So what do we mean by PCD? So see, PCD. So what we are finding is this angle. So I have shaded it. So hope you guys get a clearer view. Okay. So for a for an equilateral triangle, we have a 180 degrees in total. But since the three sides are the same, so the three angles are also the same. The sum of the interior part of a equilateral 
of an equilateral triangle is 180 degrees. So we divide it by 3, we get 60, 60, 60. And we know that right angles have 90 degrees, right? So 90 degrees minus 60, we have 30 degrees over here, and then another 30 degrees over here. And here's another important geometrical fact. So for two for a triangle which has two lengths of the same length, we call that isosceles triangle. So let me spell that out. Uh, isosceles triangles. So these two angles will be of the same magnitude. So, so they'll be the same length actually. So 30 plus 2, same things equals to 180. So 30 plus 2x equals to 180. So our x will be 75. So I hope you calculated this yourself prior to me explaining. So 75, 75. So here we have our angle PCD plus our angle BCP. So this one, so this one plus this one is a 90 degrees because how do I say because squares have 90 degrees now okay so our PCD is 90 degrees minus BCP how 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 big is BCP it's 75 degrees so our answer is 15 degrees so yeah right over here and lo and behold we will have our last question of the day so problem six Find the smallest positive integer which leaves remainder 1 when divided by 2. Okay, and then and so on. You can just read the sentence. Uh, notice some things. So, remainder 1 when divided by 2, remainder 2 when divided by 3. You can see they have the same, uh, how do I say, characteristic. Why? Because, uh, see, almost 1, almost 1. So, I add one more. In this case, in this case, I add one more and then this number will be a multiple of 2. I add one more and this number will be a multiple of 3. I add one more and this number will be a multiple of 4. And then I add one more, this number will also be a multiple of 5. So uh, this number is basically, this number, let's say it's x, is basically a multiple, multiple of uh, 2, 3, 4, and 5 minus 1. Because you see it's almost, right? I hope your grades aren't almost like me. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, uh, so what we need to find now is the smallest multiple of at the same time two, three, four, and five. So, try and calculate this. So, if you have calculated that, I guess that you have found three times four times five is the smallest one, which is sixty, and then x equals to sixty minus one equals to fifty nine. So, uh, this is a very this is a, how do I say, I hope you have used this analogy, this way of thinking to solve this problem. If not, uh, I'd like to introduce to a concept called modular arithmetic. Modular arithmetic. Which basically is like finding the remainder of a number. But you can search it on the web. And then I also have made, made a few videos of that also. But it's in Chinese, so if you understand some Chinese, you can also take a look at that also. But yeah, so we'll end our problem over here. I hope you guys have take can take away something from here. And we'll see you guys in the next video. So bye-bye.